Walk with me. In thee, O Yahweh, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thou ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net they have led privily for me, for thou art my strength. Into thy hands I commit my spirit, for thou hast redeemed me, O I am God of truth. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in thee I am, and I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble, thou hast known my soul in adversities. And thou hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy, thou hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O oh, I am, for I am in trouble. My eyes is consumed with grief, yea, my soul in my belly. For my life is spent with grief, my years with sighing, my strength faileth because of my iniquity, and my bones are consumed. I was a reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and a fear to mine acquaintance that they did see me without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind, and I am like a broken vessel. For I have heard the slander of many, fear was on every side, while they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee, O I am, I said thou art my God. Many times are in my hand, deliver me from the hands of my enemies, and from them that persecute me, and make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. And let me not be ashamed, O Sanini Nanini, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed, and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. O oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee for the sons of men. But thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence and from the pride of man, for thou shalt keep them secretly in the pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the I am, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplication when I cried unto thee. O oh, love the I am, all ye his saints, for the I am preserveth the faith and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the I am. Psalm chapter 31. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts, and let them not lead me astray from thee, my God. Establish thou me and my seed that we go not astray henceforth and forevermore. Jubilees chapter 12 and verse 20. Yes, all, oh, yes, yes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Those of you on this YouTube channel, we thank God for you. And we give God the glory for all the things that he is doing in the earth today. Yes, to even to your redemption. To redemption of those that trust in him and that obey his commandments, statutes, ordinances, and laws. Yes, even the government of the whole earth is Yahweh. Yes, yes, yes. We're just reading from Psalms just 31. And now we're in the, still in the book of 1 Samuel, the last chapter. Yesterday we read to you from uh, verse 29 and 30. Today we're in 1 Samuel chapter 31. Yes, 1 Samuel chapter 1. And also with a hand clap of praise, we thank God for those of you who have been with us since the beginning and those of you that have been here, there, and here, and there's about. And we thank God for those of you that are about to subscribe and those of you who have just subscribed, calling those things that are not as though they are. And we thank God for you. You're walking with Mr. Clay. I'm Mr. Clay. And on this beautiful morning, afternoon, evening, we thank God even for what he's doing before our eyes, 
We see the rise and falls of many things. We seeing the fall. We seeing the rise of the feet that Daniel saw. We're actually seeing that rise because we're still locked up in the Greco-Roman system. Now, this here has been like uh, two people, two entities reigning over the whole earth. But yet this, these feet are still, what is built upon it is the ideology of these, this Greco-Roman system. And many have gotten it to the point where they have not watched and prayed. Now, when the powers that be are defeated and the powers that should come, they're not, but they shall work in cohesion with each other. They, they're not going to be all entwined and, you know, ruled by one man and all this. No, no, it's not going to be that way. And what this is, the rising of Africa, the rising of the countries that were subdued by the Greco-Roman system. But now we are trying, we're seeing the feet that Daniel saw counting down to the time when the Most High shall come and rule all the earth. Yes, all the earth and those anointed that will be with him. Yes, now we're in 1 Samuel chapter 31. We read where Saul sought the witch, witch at Endor, and she was, this translation doesn't really say the witch at Endor, but we know that she was cast out because Saul had put away all those that were in there. Instead of deleting them as God had commanded Israel to do, he just said, you better leave. You better leave now. God had gave him, given them ample time to leave all the soothsayers, the necromancers, all these that were of the dark arts of the Egyptian, should I say, persuasion, and those that were of the Canaanite persuasion, and those that have, of Israel, that have adopted those wicked ways before the Most High in consulting, should I say, other entities that God have created, even the Most High that we call, He created all the entities, good and evil. They were not all evil at one time. We know that, but He created them. And He uses them to His advantage and to the testing and the, the fortifying of those who are heirs to be with him in that day that he comes with tens of thousands of his anointed according to the book of Enoch. Yes. Now, in verse 1, 1 Samuel chapter 31 and verse 1, Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Geboah. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons, and the Philistines slew Jonathan. Now, God, now, Jonathan's dead. This is because of his father. Jonathan was a brother, and a, he loved David as his own soul, as it is written. And Aminadab and Metishua, sons of Saul. In other words, God's cutting off all his seed. He has nothing left. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him. And he was sore wounded, wounded of the archers. And then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw thy sword, and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me, for his armor bearer would not. Now you can imagine in his, his native language how he would talk. He would talk more like you would hear those that are on the continent, the known continent of Africa. This is... That was on the continent of Africa, but they built everything to try to separate it from Africa in order to justify their wannabe status. Now, so therefore he's on the continent of Africa speaking just like an African, an Egyptian, or Ethiopian. All those have same, the same way that they say the words that they say in the different languages, and he's speaking, not in this old English language, like you would see castles built everywhere and all this other, ugh, whatever. But either way, this is what he's speaking. And he says, 
Draw thy sword and thrust me through, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me. You are already circumcised, uncircumcised, Saul, in your heart. Moreover, that was just a symbolic thing of one being sensitive to the things of the Most High. This is what he's saying. When, when a baby is circumcised, when a man is circumcised, he becomes sensitive in that private area, in the secret of his area. So you have to look at the, the, the thing about circumcision. In the secret of the area, you become sensitive even when your pants touch it or whatever until it gets used to it. You're sensitive to it. You, 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 you're just, it's just an acute, it's a thing that, I mean, it just, you, you feel it when you walk. You feel it every time. If somebody even touch you there, you feel it. And the same thing should be with the word, the commandment, statutes, and the ordinances of the, the Most High. That anything that comes against it in your mind or outside or inside, that it sh you should be sensitive to it, circumcised in your heart that you will not sin against the Most High. This is for the reason that we hide the word of the Most High in our hearts, that we might not sin against Him. Yes. But the armor bearer would not, for he was afraid, so afraid. Therefore Saul took his sword and fell upon it. In other words, he committed, he did another thing. He committed suicide. He took his own life. Instead of just letting it play out the way it's going to play out, he took his own life. This is foolery. You say, well, he was a big, strong, beautiful young man and growed into a strong man. And next thing you know, he was so full of himself that he could outthink the Most High or he could figure out something to get around the most high. Or he could do that which seemeth in his own mind, trying to use the things of the most high to not only appease the most high, but yet do it the way he wants to do it, or he think it should be done. And some of us are like that. If we were in the land of Israel, we would think putting to death these things that God had told Israel to put to death and put away from them and put them out, even the necromancers to burn them and everything else. Not as the Christians did because they had some woman or some preacher had some woman that he liked and she didn't like him. Not like that. No, 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 no. We're talking about people that actually sought these deceased spirits or these familiar spirits. Those who studied the stars and these astrologers. See, many of them would have been put to death, and those who would ascribe to such things would not do it for fear. This is the way God had to deal with people, that they might be able to govern themselves and not spread their evil in the land to pollute it. This is what he's talking about. The, the land was the people. The people is the land. He didn't want the Israel to be polluted with the filth. Of thou shalt not have any other gospel, necromancing, and all those other things having God before God. Things before God. That's what it is. Although it's real and some of us are, we're fascinated by it. It's putting evil or those things that are detrimental to the, just even the service of the Most High. You're serving evil. You're serving disobedience. But yet, oh, it's just for the children. The pumpkins and all this. It's just for the children. Oh, is that so? This devil show got them devil show got you deceived, don't they? They got you all messed up because you trying to justify why you do the things that you do. Why you solicit the dark arts and the dark things to the point where you, you do them in your churches. Some of them even Muslims that do it. And you know, we ain't even got on Christmas yet, but the fact is, is that Saul took his own life, what seemed right to him, instead of following what God had prescribed for all Israel to do that. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with him. This was the faithfulness of an armor bearer. And you got your church armor. Um, you think that armor bearer going to die with you, Pastor? <laughs> You got another thing coming. It's an armor bearer. Oh, your, your Bible is your armor. 
No, hiding the word of God in my heart that I might not sin against him is my armor. It's not just a tangible book. That's pagan. See, this is what God was trying to get Israel from. The paganistic material things that we see. Some of you are so fed up with what you don't see that you want to take it and you want to have artificial smoke, artificial glory with colors and all type of technological things that might to you seem like heaven or holy. Not so before the Most High. Simplicity is what he does. Yes, just do it simple. If I tell you, God says, if I tell you, God tell him, I told you to do it, then lead them. But you're going to tell them to get out the country. They should have got out the country when they heard the order come. That's what should have happened. You don't tell them nothing. You delete them. The people know they, they, they can come in and out and do their little dirt and deceive others and then go out and do what they want to do. But Saul, Saul did what seemed better in his heart to fall upon his sword. And his armor bearer, armor bearer did just like his king. <laughs> just like many of you, you do just like your government and not the government of heaven. So Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer, all his men that same day together. And when the men of Israel were on the other side of the valley and they were on the other side of Jordan, saw that the men of Israel fled and Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them. Yes, these things have even happened in Cabrina Faso, Burkina Faso, and all the Sahel. Or should I say Africa? So for some of you that don't understand. But the fact is, is that you had these insurgents. You had these people from the north. They come down and they were taking over their cities and enslaving and uh, killing and uh, looting the people. And some places they had strong strongholds. But God raised up a, a group of men that would come and counteract all these things, but yet these were even financed and done over, or should I say, uh, supported by Western forces or Western governments to secure the, the gold. That's one of them. And the other precious metals and those things that are used in inventions of men. Yes. They were, but now God has raised up some men that will go and will direct their armies toward pushing these men out, even if it turns to the point where if they do not leave, that they will be, let's put it plainly, killed. Now, then the men of Israel were on the other side. Now, eight. And it came to pass on the morrow when the Philistines came to strip the slain. In other words, they're going to take shoes, clothes, cloaks, anything they can get their hands on. They found Saul and his three sons fallen in Geboah. Now, Saul, note that Saul died in Geboah. And they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent it into the land of Philistine. Now, the way they did Saul was to detest of God towards Saul. And that Saul was so hard-headed. He wanted to obey the commandments his way. Just like Christians and Muslims and all kind of messed up people. You want to obey God's commandments, statutes, ordinances, and laws your way. When it's convenient for you. Like your Jesus and the way your Muhammad or your angel who come down or your messenger says to him, do it this way. Oh, la di da di When God says this, absolutely do it this way. I, you have agreed. I say that because you have many Israelites that have resulted unto Islam and you have those who have resulted unto Christianity. And then you still have those that come under the name of being of the children of Jacob, but yet still in practice, they do those things containing in idolatry, even to the worshiping of their Jesus. Or their Yahawashai, or their Yahusha, or whatever you want to call it. It says, now they put his armor in the house of Astaroth. In other words, that was victory for their gods. 
that was victory for their gods. And this is the very thing they do. Taking the vessels or the anointed of the Most High and putting in the house of their gods. You, the anointed of vessels of the Most High, you're putting, you put yourself in a church to be enslaved. You allow yourself to be that way. You leave death, not usually, but death is the best way out if that's the only way you got. There's no more they can do. And when the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard of that which the Philistines had done to Saul, all valiant men rose and went all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons. They took the headless body of Saul, for his head was put in their God's temple from the Beth Shane and came to Jabesh and burnt them there. And they took their bones and buried them under a tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. Sad. And many of us, we don't understand why we die so much, so many hideous deaths. Because the fact is, in our praise, God will preserve us because He He solicits our praise. He solicits our he wants that's, that's worship of him when we do those things that are right before his eyes. When the first, why did he make the first commandments anyway? Thou shalt not have no other gods before. This is the first thing he says. Don't have nothing before. Do any government or any president want you to have another government before him? You come in this land and all you talk about is your government and your president over his? No, he gonna, somebody's going to seek to take you out. Period. Somebody's going, you go to Russia talking about the president of the United States or Europe or whatever and find out what happened. You, I don't think you're going to come back too quickly. But either way, it's a government. Government, religion, religion, government. Either way, the way of Israel is for its government, which is the most high. And his angels are the government and bodies. They do what he bids. The same thing with every government. It was all he goes by a certain rule. And that rule was written in the books of those before him. It's called the Constitution in many places. Even from the president on down to the law enforcement or those who enforce. Because a cop is barely supposed to be enforcing that which the government has put upon him. It goes down from the national government to the doggone state government to the city government to the local government or what have you. You're carrying out what the king said before or what the government said before. I mean, in your own little way, you're doing that. But yet you don't go by that constitution that is for all. And this is everywhere. There's a constitution. But yeah, it depends on what color you are. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It depends on what color. It depends on how I feel on that very day. Or if I want low-hanging fruit or if I just want to tell them you stop resisting. Either way, it's, it's, it's just the way I want it. Because they hired me to do such things anyway. They're not going to hire these black and brown folks too much. Because they don't have the agenda of the hierarchy. But either way. If we obey his commandments, it doesn't matter whether we live or die. His commandments, statutes, ordinances, and laws the best we can. We can, we can do those commandments. Because in, within the commandments are many of the statutes, ordinances, and laws. <laughs> you don't get it. I forgot what you call it. When you use either a fish diagram or whatever, all these things, they are subtitled under these, what you call Ten Commandments. See, they don't understand this stuff. Those of Egyptian persuasion or Egyptologists, yes, you have your, what you call it, but that's here, neither here nor there because Egypt is erased. Egypt is no good. It's overran. It will never rise again. Never. Why do you keep going to a beating a dead horse of idolatry? God wouldn't have got rid of it if it was so that important. And with that, that was
Walk with me.